us pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the peace of the Lord be with each of you. We gather today on the 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time, where the scriptures remind us that just like a little yeast makes all the bread rise, a little bit of a teeny mustard seed grows into this big tree, that a little goes a long ways in God's hands. So let us gather today to put our little bit of faith and our little bit of energy into God's hands. Let us put before us today the healing we need and the forgiveness and strength we need. Lord Jesus, you come as light in the midst of darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to heal our broken world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to lead us by the power of your wisdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Show favor, our Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace. Continue to strengthen us so that we can be open to the power of your spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name, who lives with us and through us now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you, Lord, whose care is for all people, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly. For your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are sovereign in strength, you judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us. For you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works, you have taught your people that the righteous must be kind and you have filled your children with good hope because you give repentance for sins. My brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord. Sisters, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words, and God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed to the crowd another parable. The reign of God may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came 
and sowed wheat throughout his wheat, then made off. When the crop began to mature and yield grain, the weeds made their appearance as well. The owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where are the weeds coming from? He answered, I see an enemy's hand in this. His servant said to him, Do you want us to go out and pull up the weeds? No, he said in reply, Pull up the weeds, and you might take the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will order the harvesters. First collect the weeds, bundle them up to be burned, then gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed still another parable. The rain of God is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of seeds of all. Yet when full grown, it's the largest of plants. It becomes so big a shrub that the birds of the sky come and build their nests in its branches. He offered them still another image. The rain of God is like yeast, which a woman took and kneaded in three measures of flour. Eventually, the whole mass of dough began to rise. All these lessons Jesus taught to the crowds in the form of parables. He spoke of to them in parables only to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what was lain hidden since the creation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went home. His disciples came to him with the request, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in answer, The farmer sowing good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the citizens of the kingdom. The weeds are the followers of the evil one and the enemy who sown them it's the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, while the harvesters are the angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned, so will it be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will dispatch his angels to collect from his kingdom all who had drawn others to apostasy and all evildoers. The angel will hurl them into the fiery furnace where there be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the saints will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Let everyone heed what is heard. The Gospel of the Lord. Oh, hey church. Okay, so I'm sitting here and I'm reading this and Jesus is explaining to his disciples, explaining to all the people, um, visions of the kingdom of God, what the kingdom of God is like. And he's using parables to explain these things. Parables which are stories told to express a lesson a simple way of expressing a complex notion. And so he tells the parable of the sower of the seeds, the parable of the mustard seed, and the parable of the yeast, the sower of the seed where the farmer sows good seed, but the enemy comes and sows weeds. And the parable of the mustard seed where it is, even though it's small, that if we have faith that size, that we could do mighty things, that we could even move mountains, amen? And the parable of yeast, which is folded in um, to the dough and can leaven the whole loaf. So 
I'm trying to get the lesson, right? So Jesus is teaching a lesson in parables and I'm trying to get the lesson. So let's see how I did, right? So the parable of the weeds, there are good and bad among us. That God, everything God made is good. We remember that from creation, right? We remember that from creation and and God said it was good. And But the enemy has come and sowed in things in our hearts, in our lives, in our way to block us from the kingdom. And, you know, the disciples are like us. You know, we want to move those things out of our way. We want to get rid of them. But the problem is that we don't always have the best judgment of what is good and what is bad. Sometimes our eyes deceive us. Sometimes our perception may be off. So God tells us, let it all grow together, that there will come a time when he shall divide the wheat from the chaff. In Matthew 5 and 45, it says that he maketh the sunshine on the just and the unjust alike, and he sendeth the rain on the righteous and unrighteous. So we are reminded in this parable that we do not need to concern ourselves about separating the wheat from the chaff or bring, pulling up um, the bad things, that our focus must be on being the best Christian that we can be. And so Jesus is ex explaining this in parable. So, you know, I'm trying to get the lesson, right? And so then he goes, says, says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. And even though it's the smallest of seed, when it grows, it grows into a mighty bush. And so when our faith grows, we grow stronger. And, and that strength and that power in our faith can make things happen in our lives and around us and give courage and comfort and care to those around us. That's a, I'm, I'm trying to get the lesson, right? And so it says that when it grows, when your faith grows, others can take rest in you like the birds of the air come and build their nests in the bushes of the mustard uh, tree, right? So, you know, I'm trying to figure this out. And then the parable of the yeast that leavens the whole loaf, that the kingdom of God grows from small beginnings or our mustard seed of faith, which is passed on from generation to generation, leveling, leavening the loaves of our lives and of our generations, passing on the faith, that faith in which we are poured into and mixed into and leavened, which leavens the whole loaf. At one time, there was only one Catholic in my family, and now there are many. At one time, there was only one believer in my family, and now there are many. Over generations, we have leavened the yeast of our faith and poured it into our community so that now the whole loaf is, is leavened. The parables encourages us as disciples to expect that their enemy is busy, amen? but that our faith can be strong and that it is our job to act as leaven, as yeast, and, and leaven the loaves of the people in our lives to expand our faith so that it pours out on them. And so the disciples asked Jesus, explain this whole 
everything to us, and Jesus does, you know. And so I won't re-preach Jesus' sermon, but I do want to take time to think about these things that Jesus has presented to us in parable so that we might understand. He ends, uh, Matthew ends this gospel um, with the phrase, it's not in this translation, but I like the way it is in other translations where it says, let those who have ears, let them hear. Let us pray together our belief in God and the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things invisible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in a one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. And let us present to the Lord our needs, the needs of our larger church community. For all those who have died, especially for Miss Verna Shade, who was buried today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who continue to suffer and die because of COVID-19, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for racial justice, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. I invite you to lift up your own needs and concerns. Lord God, we lift up to you these and all those needs that weigh in our hearts. We make them known in confidence through your Son, Jesus, who always lives and works through us, now and forever. Amen. As we get our altar prepared with our gifts, I again thank all of you who continue to send in your donations. It makes a big difference. One of the few times in life, I'm always happy to open the mail because often it's people's tithes and something comes to the front door is often people's tithes. And through our um, website, through the PayPal app and the Parish Self Giving app. So, all those have worked well, and we've been able to keep up our collection, which is more than many other neighboring parishes that have done. So, just, you know, I'm just I always keep bragging, yeah, well, St. Martin's is doing well. I never say the rest of the sentences. I'm not sure why you aren't. I don't say that. I'm just say, you know, we have wonderful people at St. Martin's who are very faithful in their support. I'm only drinking water, guys, don't worry. Someone thought I drank coffee through the whole mass. Lord God, we ask that you bless this bread and this wine, food of the field and food of the vine, so it soon becomes the very body and blood of Jesus. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept his sacrifice through the hands now and forever. Accept, the Lord, we pray, the offerings we bring to you from the abundance of your many gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, who is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own likeness and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all that you've made and forever praise you in your mighty works through your Son, Jesus. We join all the angels as we say, Holy, 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 
Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave me thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave me thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Welcome to our bishop and all of the women and men who lead and guide the church. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially all those who have died from COVID. And welcome all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Martin, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, with him, in him. O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with each of you. And one day, hopefully soon, we'll be able to physically see each other, even if it's with masks, to be able to share this out of peace. And one day, hopefully not too far distant future, we'll actually be able to go and um, hug and shake hands and all that good stuff. But right now, we can share peace virtually with those in our own households. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite all of you to, again, invite the risen Lord to come spiritually into your hearts. There's nothing that can limit God's grace and God's presence. So even though we can't physically receive at this time, we can still receive that grace that comes from the risen Lord through the Eucharist. So I invite you to invite the Lord Jesus into your heart to give you the grace and strength and wisdom that you need for this week, the body of Christ.
Let us bow our heads and pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift will continue to strengthen us to work for justice and peace in our world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our announcements this week. Uh, the parish council meets on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. So the parish council usually is off in the summer, but there's just too many decisions we have to make. Uh, one of those big decisions is when we'll start having mass in person. When we do that, it'll be just one mass on Sunday at 12 noon. And we've already sent out a link to what mass during the COVID period will look like. It was sent out last week. So if you look, it'll be reset again today. So look again at it. It's about a nine-minute video that talks about how things are going to look different in church and how we're going to act different. But it's important to have an idea of what's going to happen before you come to church so that you understand what's, what, what's required. It's a 15-page guideline the diocese set out. The most humorous part is the very second paragraph says, Masses should now be reverent and brief. I'm just saying. Might be a reason why I don't have to preach so long. Uh, I want to thank all those who helped make today happen. Paul and Tyler are lectors. Deacon Bobby for preaching. Christina and the keyboard folk. Um, both Daniel and Mario do a wonderful job with all that. And Dave for his patience and helping to glue all this together. So we continue to find new ways to pray. We continue to find new ways to be church. And that's what makes St. Martin so special. So we will hang in there and see how things develop. But either way, we'll continue doing Mass as we're doing now for a long time until we get past all these challenges. I think that's all my announcements for today. The Lord be with you. May the Lord continue to lead and guide us. May the Lord continue to touch our little faith to make us strong. May God continue to be there to give us the strength and grace and wisdom we need this week. And let the church say, Amen. May Almighty God bless each of us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to build a more just, a more honest, a more faithful world. Amen.